So I'm in the garden and I just finished preparing it for winter planting and I have lots of flowers right now and so I'm going to use those flowers today to imprint on some of this fabric that I've been dyeing with plants and berries from around my yard. I've been wanting to do this project for a while and there's a lot of videos floating around on the internet right now about how to do this and so my blackberries are on their last leg. It's officially fall and so I thought what better time to do as much with my blackberries as possible. I'm also drinking a blackberry juice that I made um, which is technically just the blackberry dye <laughs> and I just added maple syrup to it. One of my intentions for this entire project is I want to make hair bandanas um, that are reminiscent of these bandanas that I wore when I was a little girl, kind of during my Mary Kate and Ashley era. But I used to wear those when I was a little girl and I loved connecting with things from my childhood that bring me good memories because those are the things that help remind me of my inner child and connect with that part of myself. And so I thought it would be really cool to try and make some of those bandanas and then use them in veiling practicing for um, some of the spiritual work that I do. Before I begin imprinting the flowers on all of this fabric that I dyed, I thought I would tell you how I dyed this fabric. This is not a how-to video, this is my first time. So I started with some white linen that I had bought from the fabric store and you need to uh, treat your fabric first with a mordant so that the dye can stick to the fibers as best as possible. For my mordant, I use soy milk because um, that's just what I had on hand. And so I soaked um, all of my linens in the soy milk for about 15 hours and then I let it dry in the sun and then I repeated that process using the same mordant. I didn't throw it out. I just re-soaked my fabric in it again so that the mordant could really stick on there. The next thing that I did was pick my blackberries. I blended them in my blender with some water and then I boiled them to extract as much um, dye or color from the berries as I could. And then I strained that mixture so that I could remove the pulp and the seeds from the dye. Then I had my blackberry dye, AKA my blackberry juice, which I'm drinking. And then I soaked my fabrics in the blackberry dye for four days. The next dye that I made, I really wanted to get a green color. And so I tried using sage, mugwort, and rosemary. And I did the same thing. I blended those together with water and I boiled them to extract the color and soaked the fabric in that mixture for four days. So the blackberry dye, was so beautiful pulling it out of the jar that I was using to soak the fabric in it was so satisfying and the color was just stunning the color does dry a lot lighter than it does um, when it's wet at first but it was just so perfect the other dye that was supposed to be green it ended up looking like a blotchy rag that someone had left in a mechanics shop for like five years and so that's not the vibe I was going for <laughs> and so I decided to make a new dye which brings me to what I'm branding as the great turmeric disaster of 2022. So I put a bunch of turmeric powder in water, tried to make a dye, had a momentary lapse in judgment, poured the hot water into a glass jar, the glass jar broke and the dye went everywhere. By the grace of God, my countertops are yellow. Uh, my countertops now have a new yellow tint and my broken dishwasher, unfortunately, did not make it, did not survive. Um, so this is the fabric that I dyed and I don't even like it, but the blackberry dye was perfect. It was beautiful. And because of that, I decided to dye some of my clothes. And so the first thing is that I had this white linen shirt that I had thrifted and I was going to get rid of it because everything is sticking to it. So I just dyed it to see what would happen. And that didn't really work out because some of like the armpits dyed like a different color. Um, I don't know who was doing what in this shirt before, but <laughs> that's what happened. And then I dyed a vintage silk um, slip dress that I had. And this turned out perfectly. 
Um, and this brings me to the next part of this experiment was the washing of the fabric after I had dyed everything. So because the clothes I was going to be wearing and I didn't want the dye to come out over time, I put the shirt, the dress, and one piece of my bandana fabric in the washer. And that really did take out a lot of the color and also left some splotchy marks on the fabric. So I ended up dyeing some of my fabric twice. So this piece, you can kind of see the splotchy this. So this piece, and the dress have been dyed twice and then this piece of linen has been dyed once so you can kind of see the difference in the fabrics so these are both linen this one's been dyed twice this one's been dyed once and then this is silk that's been dyed twice um, oh and then this is the linen shirt that's been dyed once and washed through the washer so i love all these different hues and these different fabrics i think that's really cool Technically, these are all linens. So this is really neat. I just loved that experiment. And uh, then with my leftover blackberry dye, I made more spellbook paper. And I've been doing this for a few years where I soak my uh, paper in blackberries and then use those pages for my spellbook. So I was able to really get the most out of my blackberries. So now I'm ready to imprint um, my flowers into my fabric and I just have these rough shapes so far and then I'm going to cut out my actual um, shape that I want after I'm done and do a little bit of sewing as well. I'm just going to press some of my flowers. I'm going to try and press some dahlias. I've never done that before. You could call it a vision. finished steaming. I can already see <clears throat> some pigment on this one. I tried two different techniques for the wrapping and I'll link the video that inspired this below. So I used like a medical wrap over this one and then on this one I put that layer of plastic in there. So let's unveil them and see what we have. Okay, so the first one did not work at all. I think I even steamed it for too long because I can't get the flowers off. Okay, this one I can tell didn't work out either. <laughs> It looks really great with the flowers on there, but so this did not work at all. 
feeling really tired. There's one other technique that I can try, and it's the hammering technique. So I'm gonna watch some videos and start all over. <laughs> crows have something to say. So that worked out a lot better. I'm gonna try a couple other flowers and <laughs> this is the steamed one. This is not what I was picturing when I started this. Um, yeah, so uh, I have a plan. Stay tuned. I'm going to re-dye this right now with my blackberry juice and I will be back in a new day. <laughs> Alas, we are here. It is a week later and it is a glorious fall day and I've been really busy figuring out all of this stuff all of the plant imprints and the dyes and so I'm going to show you what I've been up to so firstly what I've done is I re-dyed that piece of the blackberry fabric that didn't work out and I just let it sit in the dye actually for the entire week so that it could cover up as many of those stains as possible. With the other fabric that didn't turn out, I couldn't get those stains out. I did rewash it. And oh, also I used a different mordant this time. I soaked them in vinegar. Um, online though, it says something like alum would be the best mordant, but I didn't have that. So I've sewn my first bandana and I think it looks really cute. What do you think? It looks so much like this photo of me when I was a kid with my bandana. The only thing is, is I wish this foldy part was back a little bit further. So I'm not sure if I did that right. Something else that I've been working on is I've been making all different kinds of plant dyes. And so I created this kind of vision mood dye board with all of my samples. So this one is dried hibiscus leaves. This one is the washed blackberry. This one's the unwashed blackberry. This one is beets. This one is mint leaves. And I actually really love how this one turned out because it looks kind of smoky gray. And I actually only soaked that in the mint leaves for like two hours. So if it was a couple days, I think it would be even smokier and I just love it. This one's spirulina because I was really determined to try and get that green color I was originally going for, but it didn't really work out. And I did do spinach, but I lost my sample um, and it still wasn't green. Then there's the old turmeric. And uh, this one's a surprise. This one is so cool. This is orange gladiola petals and it's just so, so pretty. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of a hammer session and then I'm going to use my paint to kind of complete the imagery a bit.
am finally done all of my plant dyeing and hammering projects and everything turned out so, so well. Look at my bandana. Isn't it adorable? I ended up finding a little bit of a solution because it was kind of like sticking out on the sides quite a bit and I just tuck, pin tucked, like I just sewed the edges down a little bit and so it kind of folded the front down. I feel like the hair scarfs, hair bandanas look so, so cute. They are exactly what I wanted and they make me feel like my inner child. So for this one, I didn't really paint a lot over it. I did on the green leaves, but not so much on the pansies because I just wanted it to be kind of ethereal and really natural. But for this one, I did add some paint over the leaves and the flowers just a little bit honestly just to bring it out and it's so pretty and i love that the purple one matches the dress i'm really loving this outfit i feel like a little villager back in the day or something in this dress and this bandana i think it's so so cute so let me put on the yellow one so here's the yellow one and I really love the pop of color. It feels really fresh. Like this one, this one's a vibe and this one's its own separate vibe. <laughs> so even though the steaming process didn't work for me in terms of imprinting the flowers onto the fabric, that whole process of trial and error did inspire me to do something else. I really loved the way that the flowers looked laid out on the fabric. And so I took those flowers that I pressed and I made a piece of art. <laughs> I really, really love it. I think it's so beautiful and so earthy, obviously, and it just reminds me of fairies and it's just so light and fresh and I really, really love it. So we are officially all done and thank you so much for watching. Definitely this was a video of trial and error and it's really nice to be able to find the ways that you can utilize the plants and the berries in new ways and just find the ways that the earth can inspire you and sustain you and I think that's really cool. So obviously for imprinting the flowers the hammering process was the one that worked the best for me. I wouldn't say that that is a process that everyone will be able to do because it's very loud but it worked for me and I'm very happy with all of my new accessories. <laughs> I just love it. So thank you so much for watching and coming on this journey with me and I will see you next time. Bye.